Hello everyone, my name is Zenitsu, and I'm back with another Digimon video. This time I'm going to be doing another unboxing. It is going to be a double unboxing of the newest set, which is BT-15 Exceed Apocalypse. So I was able to get two boxes from my LGS, so I also got some pre-release packs to go alongside it, just to make things a little bit more interesting. But in regards to BT-15, as people are opening it up, people are realizing that the pull rates aren't necessarily the greatest. On my pre-release guide video, I kind of went over the breakdown in terms of what the expected pull rates were, and well, it seems like those expected pull rates were on the correct side. I don't know exactly what the overall impact on the secondary market is going to be, but just be aware that when it comes to the super rares and secret rares, they're most likely going to be on the more expensive side with this set in particular. So I'm not necessarily a huge fan of it. So Let's just dive right into uh, the booster box openings, you know, the fun part. So there's no extra box toppers or anything, so it's just going to be a box topper with all of the Digitamas. Not necessarily the most exciting thing in the world, but hey, it is what it is. So I'm going to be taking the first box on the slower side, as I usually do, and the second box is going to obviously be a little bit faster because we would have seen the vast majority of the cards.
So overall, not necessarily too bad. I don't know if these boxes are going to be seated just like in BT14, where you're either going to open up more ace cards or more rookie cards. As you can see, I opened up the vast majority of the cards in my SR slots were ace cards. So it'll be interesting to see if uh, the other box gets a different result or like what other results are possible. Or is this just going to be a rerun of uh, BT14 uh, in terms of if a box is going to be an ace box or a rookie box? I know in BT14 there wasn't a whole lot of variance in between the different box types. There technically was a third one where it was a more healthier mix, but those were more uncommon than they were common. So... It'll be interesting to see how this set develops and how the prices develop as a result. It looks like all of the LM cards are going to actually be in foil, and it looked like you are at least going to see one per pack, if not more per pack, depending on, well, the rarities because they're affecting each of the different rarities. So the LM cards are just fused inside of the set. They don't have a dedicated pull slot, so they are just impacting the set's uh, pull rates as normal and aren't changing things at all other than just making card frequency a little bit on the less side. I think when it comes to just certain cards, they are going to be a little bit more common or uncommon depending on the overflow because uh, I did notice in uh, my uh, rare slots that I was pulling a couple of cards a little bit higher than I was in other ratios. So just as an example, I saw three Izzy's. Theoretically, if the math was perfect average, I wouldn't necessarily see three Izzy's. I would see at most two Izzy's. And same thing kind of goes for the uncommons, and I'm not even going to look through all of the commons to see how many of any given common. These just feel a little bit more random than they have in the past compared to, you know, the base mathematical averages. So let's clear all this up and move on to box two to see if box two does any better. When it hurts like this.
So all in all, box two wasn't necessarily the greatest. I did unfortunately get a double alt art box. Usually in a case, you're going to see an average of four double alt art boxes. And then the rest of the boxes in a case is going to be dedicated towards having at least one secret rare. I think the alt arts are going to be a little bit more random. And even though I did pull a lot of similar cards when it came to my super rares, there's going to uh, be some probably seeding in terms of what you're likely to see just because the fact that I did see basically five of the exact same that did kind of feel a little bit fishy and I only got two unique new uh, supers but at the end of the day it is just what it is I don't necessarily think this set is the greatest to pull on like I said the uh, secrets alt arts and super rares are going to be a little bit more expensive than normal just because well maybe not the alt arts but at least the uh, supers and the secrets in terms of their base arts will be a little bit more expensive just because uh, they're going to be harder to pull on which at the end of the day is like both a good thing and a bad thing just because it does make the product a little bit more desirable because it is harder to pull but at the same time because it is harder to pull it does have uh, the ability to make it the product basically be a toxic asset and stores don't necessarily like toxic assets so let me clean all of this up and we will get into the final packs which is going to be what i actually got as my box toppers and my pre-release cards. So here is my final spread of all of the high rarity cards that I got, as well as my pre-release cards and my box toppers. So I kind of already said everything I wanted to. I think that uh, where they stuck the LM cards was kind of not necessarily the greatest place, just because it did mess with the pull rates of BT-15. I think what they were able to accomplish with BT-15, though, wasn't necessarily that bad if we were used to slightly harder pull rates. But uh, the fact that we weren't made this set feel a little bit worse to open on, especially when you still get booster boxes that are kind of somewhat seated on seeing repeated cards over and over again when there is just an increased amount of cards uh, that you're able to pull on. So that is a little bit on the fishy side, but it didn't necessarily feel that much different. I just know mathematically it's different, and as a result, that'll make the cards more expensive as we've already covered before and that'll inadvertently make this set and parts of the game a little bit more expensive but it seems like Digimon just really wanted to up the value of their cards by doing a few not consumer friendly tactics I feel like if they really wanted to they should have just kept the reprints from Resurgence Booster separate done all of the RB cards that were more focused around ghost games and combined that with LM01 rather than having what we got played out and they should have just made that a smaller set dedicated towards the ghost game cards. And uh, that would have been my preferred way that would have kept the reprint set just a reprint set and that would have kept it BT15 just as BT15. So they could have made it like a 12 pack of booster box and they could have slashed the price in half just to be able to uh, make the set as affordable as possible knowing that it's not going to be a full set. But that's just my personal opinion on what they should have done with all of the LM01 cards and the various other ghost game cards from the Resurgence Booster. That's kind of all I really have for this video. Make sure to uh, like and subscribe for more content. Tell me your thoughts about the set down in the comments below, and I will see you next time.